Welcome. I am Marty Crean. I'm a volunteer docent and member of the board of directors of the Alvin Palaszczuk Museum and Sculpture Gardens. As part of our YouTube series, I will share with you today about one of Mr. Palaszczuk's most important and treasured works, The Victorious Christ, created in 1939. Alvin Palaszczuk, a devout Roman Catholic who immigrated to the America from Czechoslovakia in 1901, was well suited to create some 48 works for the Cathedral of St. Cecilia in Omaha, Nebraska. The commissions were initiated by Bishop Hunkeler. They included the Victorious Christ, Madonna of the Corn, and the Stations of the Cross. All three are represented in the collection of the Alban Palaszczuk Museum and Sculpture Gardens. Victorious Christ was Palaszczuk's first work for the cathedral. The bishop stipulated that the figure of Christ should be seven feet in height on a 15-foot cross. It would be the principal crucifix in the sanctuary of the cathedral. Victorious Christ is an atypical depiction of Christ on the cross. Rather than being downcast, Christ is looking up to his father. Palaszczuk based the composition on the scripture passage where Christ, looking to heaven, addresses his father saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. Ruth Sherwood, a former student and colleague at the Art Institute of Chicago, who was Albin's first wife, wrote in her biography of Albin entitled, Carving His Own Destiny, the head is uplifted, the whole figure is vibrant and alight with the triumph of the spirit over suffering and death. The museum is fortunate to have two examples of victorious Christ the first is located in the gardens and is made of bronze gilded in the manner of the original at St. Cecilia's. The other is located in the salon of the historic house. It is a gilded plaster casting retained by Palaszczuk as his personal crucifix. Palaszczuk was determined that victorious Christ would be his supreme achievement. As such, he made many attempts at the figure and discarded them as static and uninspiring until he finally achieved what he wanted. And on that day, he finished the work in one day as if it made itself. While he had finally achieved what he wanted for the figure of Christ, he was still struggling with the face. In an article for the Sentinel Star, April 8, 1977, Ed Hayes recounts a story that Albin told to his second wife, Emily Muska Kubat Palaszczuk, about the stranger with the beautiful face. On a Sunday morning, Albin was working in his Chicago studio. He was frustrated with his efforts to sculpt the face of Christ. In frustration, he prayed for inspiration. Oh God, help me to create this triumphant Christ. A short while later, there was a knock at the studio door. When he opened the door, he knew that his prayer had been answered. The man at the door introduced himself as a carpenter and fellow Bohemian who had been referred to Palaszczuk in hopes that he would have work for him. Palaszczuk was intrigued by the man's face and invited the stranger into the studio. He continued to sculpt the face of Christ while they discussed work that the man would do. And they agreed that the man would return the next day. Mysteriously, the man never returned to the studio. However, the artist had received the inspiration he needed to complete the face of Christ, relying on the beautiful face of the stranger. In the same article, Ed Hayes relates a story that attests 
to the high standards Albin had for his work. Albin Palaszczuk believed that a work of sculpture must be complete and correct from all views, not just the main front view. A couple of days later, he awoke in the middle of the night from a dream and exclaimed, Oh my God, one of the arms is two inches shorter than the other. He contacted the foundry, instructed them not to uncrate it, and to ship it back to him in Chicago. When he anxiously opened the crate, he found that indeed one arm was shorter than the other. I hope you've enjoyed these stories about Victorious Christ and that you will come to visit us at the Albin Palaszczuk Museum and Sculpture Garden. Come see us real soon. Thank you.